just one announcement that I want to, well, actually a couple announcements that I want to draw your attention to. This week is local church conference, so uh, please would love to have you here uh, this week. So it'll be uh, Wednesday night at 7. Uh, everyone is invited, so you don't have to be a member to attend, uh, just so you can hear about what's going on in the church, what has happened over the past year, and uh, what is going to happen uh, in the future. So uh, we'll be praying for that, and it'll be a good time. So uh, please come uh, Wednesday at 7. The other thing that I want to draw attention to is the gospel sing is, of course, Tuesday, but also coming up in about two months. So I, I want to really press this, because uh, this is the first time that we've been doing it, are able to do it, in a few years because of COVID, and it just wasn't the right timing. So we're going to kind of bring back VBS, but, but it's going to be under a different... Uh, it's going to be a creative arts camp. Uh, it's going to be set up a lot like uh, VBS. We're going to have an opening session. We're going to have different breakout groups. But the breakout groups are going to be kind of focused on acting and singing and uh, tech and, and art, and those different things. And it's going to be really cool, really fun. We need help. Uh, we have our breakout leaders, but we need family leaders. So we're, each family would be someone who would eat with the kids. They would come in here for the opening session and sit with their family in, in a row, and, 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 and they would take them to the different breakout groups. So something that, that is more, I guess you could call it crowd control, but, but like kind of talking about the stuff that's going on uh, throughout the week with them. It's not a lot of pressure. You don't have really much prep that goes into it, which uh, is, is kind of one of those things that a lot of people like right now. Uh, so so uh, if you want to be a family leader, we, we need those. We, we need a kitchen crew. We're going to be serving food each night. So 6 o'clock every night, there's going to be a different meal and and uh, if you want to be a part of that crew, we'll somehow provide some food for you and things like that. You don't have to provide the food unless you want to sponsor it uh, for that night. Uh, but if you want to sponsor a meal or be on the kitchen crew each night uh, to prep that, that meal, you could technically be out um, by, by 7 each night. Um, so so that, that would be something that you want to think about. We need uh, sign-in slash security, just people keeping... Uh, the kids safe and things like that. So if you're interested in any of those things, uh, please let me know. I'd love to have uh, you guys support that this summer. Uh, the date's on your uh, bulletin. It's July 19th through 23rd. And so what we're going to be doing, uh, we have a s certain uh, Bible theme each night, and, and uh, we're going to uh, also be working on skits and, and songs and, and things like that. And it'll be on, on Sunday morning, uh, that, that 23rd. So it's, it's going to be really cool. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we want you guys to be uh, part of it. So if you're interested, please let me know. We'll have official sign-ups next week, but I wanted uh, to push that a little bit more uh, this morning. Um, if you are on Facebook, go to uh, and check out Southview Wesleyan Church, and there's an event uh, called Creative Arts Camp. It might be labeled The Story because that's what we're going to be calling it this year, uh, the story. And uh, you can uh, uh, click that and share it with uh, friends and family and, and things like that. So it's, it's going to be a good time. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting. So tonight um, we're, we're continuing our series on the mission of the church. Now, some of us, a lot of us specifically here, go to church every week. Right? We're here every time the doors open. We are hearing the word. We are, are listening to the messages. We're, we're, we're sitting in groups. We're, we're teaching other groups, lead, leading the youth or children or different things. We're participating in leading worship. We're doing all these different things. Sometimes, though, does it ever feel like a rut? Does it Sometimes it's like you're doing the same thing over and over and over, and maybe that you're not really growing, that you're not really changing or being transformed. Maybe 
something's just not working for you in it. Do you ever feel like that? That maybe something's falling short? And maybe our lives don't maybe to seem much better because we go to church. I think that's something that we've been thinking a lot as as a board and and something that I've been thinking about a lot as a pastor, right? Like it's it's on it's on my heart to to really make disciples. To 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 make disciples that lived change lives, that transform lives. Does it seem like sometimes when you wake up on a Sunday morning that it's just a chore to get up and to get out the door and to get here? To be a part of the community, to to be here, to be involved and and engaged in the congregation? Are we doing church the right way? I I, I ask myself that a lot. Why, why, Why does it sometimes seem just hard? Are we really making disciples? Are we becoming more like Jesus? I look at Jesus and I think, something different about him than there is us, right? Obviously, he's God, so there's something that separates us, but he's also 100% human. And sometimes we forget about that. We forget that he is 100% human and he still lived a perfect life. So it is possible, it is possible to live a holy life. Something about Jesus is different. I wonder if my life, our lives could could, could actually look like that. That we could actually look like Jesus. I ask myself, what did Jesus do differently? And I think John 15 gives us that answer. John 15 is the, the, the powerful passage of the vine and the branches. So let's, let's check that out here. And this is Jesus speaking. He says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, but because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. May God bless the reading of his word. Lord, open our eyes or open our ears. Open our hearts to what you have to say to us. We pray this in your name. Amen. So Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches. And we're supposed to be connected to the vine. Now the Father is the gardener or the pruner. He takes care of the plants, the the branches. The branches must bear fruit. And in order for this to happen, the vine 
and the branches must remain connected. The branches must stay connected to the vine. And there is a relationship between them. The, the, the branches needs the vine to exist, to live, to, to thrive, to be fruitful, to multiply. And there's this idea, this, this idea of remaining that consistently is throughout this, this chapter, remain, or, or in some of your, your Bibles it says abide. And it's interesting. Because it doesn't seem like it's much, right? Remain. Abide. It doesn't seem like it's a hard task. It seems like it should be simple. But I think it's a little harder. And we make it harder even sometimes. But it doesn't seem like an action, something that we do. It, 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 it's something that we are, something that, that, that we just be. Jesus is not asking us to do anything but just remain and abide. Abide can, can t- means continue to endure, to wait, or remain. Now, it's used eight times in this passage that we just read. It's used 33 times in 33 verses. It's actually used about 38 times in thir- 33 verses throughout uh, John. And 21 times in First and Second John. 68 times total, John uses it in his books. Over, over half of the, the, the New Testament times that abide is found throughout Scripture. One of those times is in 1 John 2.6. It says, whoever claims to abide or live in him must live as Jesus did. Or in some of your Bibles, you'll read, walk as Jesus walked. There's something about that passage that just stands out to me about living like Jesus lived. We are called to live like Jesus lived or walk like Jesus walked, right? Maybe you've heard the phrase, well, you can talk the talk, but you can walk the walk, right? I, I, when I think of this, this phrase, I think of living like Jesus. If we are doing this church thing right, if we are, are making disciples like Jesus has, has called us to, we need to learn to abide. We need to learn to live like Jesus lived, to walk like Jesus walked. Now, I believe there are two types of Christians, or predominantly two types of Christians. The first one is the doers. They identify as a servant of God. They are busy, they are active, they, they can't sit still, they fill up their calendars every night of different activities usually good activities. They like doing. They like doing things that are good things, that, that encourage other people, that challenge other people. They, their purpose is found in what they do. They, they go to multiple Bible studies. They, they, they serve in multiple ministries inside and outside of the church. They, they fill their calendars and their lives with one thing after another and after another. They, they, they live it out, but maybe a little bit more out of duty, that they feel like they are supposed to do all these things. That um, I better do what Jesus commanded, maybe more out of works base. Like, if I work and do all these things, then Jesus will love me. It's a little bit more religious kind of mindset. And then there are beers. They, they identify as a, a child of God. Maybe, maybe they, they, they really press into like Genesis 1. They are, they are created in the image and likeness of God. Their purpose is, is found in Christ. They, they live on their relationship with Christ. Not out of guilt, but grace. The beers are good at praying. They're good at daily devotions. They're being at contemplating and, and, and thinking and, and dwelling on Christ. Now, beers are not necessarily good at doing they, or, or fulfilling the Great Commission. They, they'd rather stay in their comfort zone, stay within the walls. Now, being and doing are two totally different postures. And none of them are right or none of them are wrong. Because I think that's just the natural path that one of us take. We, we, 
We are either beers or doers. Now, I'm a doer. I, I'm more of a doer. And if you find yourself as a doer, I understand you. Um, a beer, I, I, I get it too. It, it's it's easy, into, easy to fall in one of these two categories. And there's nothing wrong with this. But what we need to learn is that we need to find our identity in Jesus. No matter what we do, that we can't earn or, or, or work our way to salvation. Now, it was maybe late 2016, maybe early 2017, I believe. Everything was going really well at Heartland. We, we, we were growing, we were coming to... People were coming to know Jesus. We had just remodeled our 10,000 square feet basement. It was a lot of work. We, we were doing it every Wednesday and uh, Saturday, and it took a lot out of us. We were exhausted. We were tired. We were doing all these things that were supposed to improve the ministries because of all the different enhancements that we could do, whether it was technological or paint on the walls, just, just to make it look nice, or carpet on the floor, whatever it might be. We did all these things. I was exhausted, and, and other people were too. Doing so much has a toll on a person's body, physically, emotionally, mentally. We had good motives. We wanted to do these things to be able to bring more and more people uh, to Christ. Uh, our hearts were right in the right place. But for some reason, we needed to learn to be. Do a little bit more of being. We needed to, learn to slow down. Or we'd all burn out. Burnout's not good. Burnout's not good for anybody, right? We had to learn to... to, to to shift, maybe soul shift, right? We had to, to learn to be doing things a little bit differently. We couldn't just do anymore. We had to be deeper. We couldn't just be either, right? Our faith had to be wider than just being. It had to impact the people around us. We couldn't just do or we couldn't just be. Maybe we could be doers. Be doers. And... and and this is what I'd kind of like to encourage for all of us to be, be doers. Our identity should be as a child and a servant of God. That, that both and, uh, that doing should be out of our being, right? Like we should have a personal relationship with Jesus, that we can connect with him during the week, that we can, can, can be in his word, and that we can have that connection with Jesus, but it should be lived out. There should be that living out of our faith. Our lives should reflect what Christ is doing in our hearts. People should see what is God is doing in our hearts and our lives. Our purpose should be not to just impact ourselves, but to impact others. And our heart changes who we are and, and what we do. Right? Our lives should look more like Christ. We need to learn to abide. Now, be doers are the ones who have learned to abide, I believe. Because there's, there's, there's a little bit more action in abide than we think. To, to be in Christ and live like Christ, there's something about that that we, we have to do. Now, verse 5 says, If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And this is part of the being, right? This is a part of the remaining, this, this, this abiding, this, this staying and awaiting and, and just growing with Christ. As, as we are attached to his vine, these, these branches thrive and, and can do so much like bearing fruit. But if, if we break apart, that branch is going to die. It's going to dry up and only good for a fire. We need to learn to stay attached to, to, to abide in Christ and that's the only way we, as a church, will ever bear fruit. Not based on anything of what we do, but based on who we are connected to. If we are not remaining, right, the, the branch will be thrown away and withered. These branches no longer have a purpose, but thrown into a fire. Bearing much fruit 
will prove that you are my disciples. I love that line by Jesus. Bearing much fruit will prove that you are my disciples. And as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Verse 9. Now remain in my love. It's interesting. Last week we talked about love, but we can't get away from love, right? There, there's something about fruit and, and, and abiding that, that needs that love and stay, staying connected to love. He says, remain in my love. This is how you do it, to obey my commands. To love each other as I have loved you. In verse 17, it's later said, this is my command, love each other. It's a command, but it's something that we're continuing to, to think about how we are supposed to do it. We talked about it this morning in Sunday school, right? That, that's something that we need to do, to love. Now, our abiding in Christ changes us to live in Christ, like Christ. Right here, Jesus focuses on love. Love is part of the fruit. Sound familiar? Last week, um, obviously we talked about it, but um, today we're, we're, we're looking at more than just um, abiding. We're looking at what actually fruit is. And, and many of you have heard of the fruits of the Spirit, right? In Galatians 5, it talks about what the fruits of the Spirit are, right? Abiding in Christ helps us to keep in step with the Spirit. But as opposed to our sinful nature, which is contrary to the Spirit, they are in conflict. Right? Paul talks about this in Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Before he talks about the fruits, he talks about what is contrary to the Spirit. He talks about the acts of the flesh. Verse 19, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, it's interesting, when we read that, we really pick out some some of our favorites, right? Oh, I'm not doing that, I'm not doing that, I'm not doing that. And and, and we puff up our chest, and we think, oh, I'm doing good. I'm great, right? But I think sometimes we forget about some of the other ones, right? And maybe while you connect with some of these, maybe maybe if we really abided in Christ, we would live out all of them. Because there's some of them here that that seem to pop up. Not not, uh, every church, but I would guess almost every church, at least some of these pop up. Hatred. Discord. Discord? That doesn't seem that bad. Jealousy. I want what they have. Rage. We can justify our anger, right? Because Jesus flipped over tables, so we'll justify our anger too. We, we, we can justify that. Selfish ambition. Dissension. Dissension. Ooh. Factions. Division, right? Envy drunkenness, and the like. I wonder what he means by and the like, right? We try to justify our lives so often, and it's so easy. The fruit, however, like this is the culmination of the whole message. The fruit, if it's not lived out, then what is the church doing? If we don't have any fruit ourselves, what is the community seeing in us. It seems like they're missing out so on something that we should be providing for people. There should be fruit in our lives. And what is the fruit? Galatians 5, 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit starts out with love. It keeps on coming back to love. And that's what, what Paul starts off with, right? The greatest of these is love, right? Faith, joy, and love. Right? The greatest of these, or faith, hope, and love, sorry. Um, the greatest of these is love. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, or patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step 
with the Spirit. I love this passage because if we are following Christ, if we are abiding in Christ, or if, if we are keeping in step with the Spirit, I like how Paul says it there, if we are keeping in step with the Spirit, then these things would just come out of us, right? This love and joy and peace, this patience and kindness and goodness, this faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. And I love that next line, against these things there's no law. Right? When you're living on that, when you're living these things out, there's no law. You're living in a freedom and a power of the Holy Spirit. You're, you're, you're able to, to, to live a new life. Right? The old is gone, the new has come. Right? There's something different about each one of us. Let us keep up, keep in step with the Spirit. I, I, I think that's a big part. Right? Now, what does keep in step with the Spirit mean? Because is the Spirit going really fast so we have to walk really fast? Or is he, he walking really slow so we have to walk really slow? Like, I, I don't know if you've ever tried to, to walk with somebody else. But a lot of times, you have to walk their pace. Sometimes they walk slow. Sometimes they walk fast. Now, I am a fast walker. I have long legs. So sometimes I can unknowingly walk a little bit faster and maybe push my family to walk a little bit faster without knowing it. Sometimes I need to learn to slow down. Sometimes I need to, to keep a better pace. Sometimes, sometimes the spirit is going a little bit faster than we'd like, so we have to keep up with him. Sometimes he's slowing down. Sometimes he's stopping, right? Jesus took time to pray, to go out into the wilderness, to just stop. Sometimes he just didn't do anything, and it was okay. Sometimes, sometimes he did a lot. Like a holy week, there, he was going from one thing to another, and you're like, how on earth does he have enough time to do all these things? But the Spirit walks in the pace that they want to walk, right? They... They have a whole new pace of life. And I think that's what we need to learn to do, right? When, 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 when we have become new people in Christ, we need to learn to discern how the Spirit is walking. And if the Spirit's walking slow, we walk slow. If the Spirit stops and pauses, we stop with it. If he goes fast, we, we, we go fast as well. Keeping in step with the Spirit is is a must. But it's so hard. <laughs> it's so hard. Right? The Spirit changes our desire. That those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. We learn to live differently. We learn to have different desires. Our very nature is changed when we abide with Christ. When we walk like Jesus walked, when we live as, as Jesus lived. This is what Christ looks like. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. That's what Jesus looks like. Can we keep in step with that? Can we keep in step with that spirit? If this is what it looks like, then my life should look like this. This is what I should desire. This is what, how I should desire to live. Does it? Sometimes, some days. Maybe more days than not, that would be good. Some days I really blow it <laughs> and don't display any of those. That self-control one gets me a lot. Man, what if my life looked like that? What if our church looked like that? What if our ch church lived out these fruits? What if we looked like Jesus? What if we were disciples? That not looked like us, but looked like Jesus. How would we be able to do that? 
I'm going to ask the worship team to come forward, and as they do, let us pray to make disciples that look like Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, there's something about this word that is so challenging to abide, to remain in you. There's something about abiding that John just understood. Why he wrote on it so much. Almost every chapter in John talks about abiding. So Lord, we, we try to remain connected to you. We are the branches and you are the vine and we, we can't have life without you. Without you we are nothing. We need you to exist, to live, to, to thrive. We need you. We need, we need you to, to, to learn, learn just about anything. We need you to to help us to keep in step with you. To learn the different seasons of, of life, to, to, to learn to adjust to, to paces of the Spirit. Help us to keep in step with you. Help us to walk your pace. I know it's easy to lean to one or the other of being or doing. But help us to, to have a relationship with you and to live it out in the world. It's going to be different for each and every one of us how, how that is displayed. But help the world see, see you in us. Help us to be like you. We pray this in your name. Amen.